Colorado State University's Department of Anthropology has a strong history of underwater archaeological research, and Dr. Jessie Halligan is continuing this tradition with her research on the First Americans. In Florida, it's the only place where there's really good bone and ivory tool preservation, and that's because those sites are underwater. So you had to be a scuba diver to be able to access these sites from that time period. The entire western side of the United States is much more likely where the earliest Americans are, but because of this amazing preservation, I ended up here, um, and I've been working here since 2007. Huge amounts of the world have been buried underwater, huge amounts have been um, buried under, you know, mudslides or all kinds of major geographic and geomorphic changes. During the last ice age, we basically lost 300 feet of water depth between the time period from 20,000 years ago to about um, 5,000 years ago. So Florida was three times as big. And that got me really interested. So what can we learn about past peoples, but also how has, you know, change impacted what we can know about those past peoples. The Page Latson site, which is where I worked after I finished my dissertation, I started there in 2012. It had been excavated in the 1980s and 1990s by some folks who were associated with FSU at the time and the state of Florida and the University of Florida. They had found that there were some mastodon bones in the bottom of the river about 30 feet deep that contained possible cut marks made by people and then there was some stone down there that looked like maybe stone tools and so they had published all of this and so this volume was available everybody said oh well that's a really potentially interesting site but it's underwater nobody can really assess that nobody really knows what's going on with it so it wasn't universally accepted by the scientific community, but it also wasn't, oh, this is definitely not a good site. It's just, well, we don't know what to think about it kind of thing. After finishing her doctoral research, Halligan's dissertation advisor contacted the landowners to get permission to return and investigate the Page Latin site. Essentially what we do um, is trowel or we fan with our hand and the stuff goes up to the surface and goes away. So um, we're wearing scuba gear, but other than that, we look just like any other type of archaeologist. There are pumps sitting on the surface on this floating dock um, that have a hose that goes down to the bottom where we're digging, and the pump creates a vacuum in that hose, and that hose sucks things up to a separate screen deck where there's some kind of mesh screen where all the artifacts end up that we miss. When I was doing my postdoctoral stuff at Paige Ladson in 2013, our research question was, let's make this site less ambiguous if we can. Like, is this a site where people were butchering a mastodon in what's now a 30 feet deep sinkhole, but would have been a surface exposed shallow pond, like there would have been a spring and there had been an area around of it and all kinds of animals would have come to drink there, including people, and it would have been a good place to um, hunt things if you wanted to or whatever. Um, so we wanted to see, did people do that? And so we hope to resolve the ambiguity and the only way to do that for sure is if we were lucky enough to find an, an artifact that was for sure made by people, which we did in 2013. We managed to figure out that the original excavators at the site were right, that they had a mastodon with cut marks at it. We found a stone, a stone knife that was worked on two different sides, so no way it could be made naturally um, in a layer that dated to 14,550 years old, which um, the oldest accepted sites in Florida before that dated to about 13,200 years old. So this summer we're going back and we're excavating in the area around the biface and we're going to try and see what we can find out about these people. We want to know who they were, what they were doing here, how they reacted to the changing environment, what their life ways were like. And so that's pretty much the goal of this summer is just to figure out more about these people because we really don't know much about them at all. The importance of Paige Ladson is kind of twofold, right? First of all, it is the oldest site in the southeast that is really well accepted. We have really good um, dates for it, so we're sure it, that's how old it really is. We know that for sure that people were here 14,000, you know, 500 years ago, and they were doing these things on a edge of a pond. So because we know that for sure, that gives us the opportunity to say, hey, there have to have been other people. This pond was just a tiny little place in the middle of nowhere. Now it's only about 
oh, five miles from the ocean, but it would have been over 60 miles from the ocean at the time because of how much lower sea levels were. So it was just this tiny spot in the middle of a grassland that was just nothing. And so it's not like that would have been the most important place people would go, which means people had to have been lots of places around it. They would have had to been part, it would have been a part of a bigger life way. And so we got to start looking for those. And we now know that they're probably is something to find. Maybe most of those sites were destroyed, but some of them are probably still out there. Finding that one stone knife in a layer that we could date so well, you know, completely revamped our entire understanding of how people got to the southeast and when they got to the southeast. So um, the underwater archaeology can answer so many types of questions that uh, non-underwater archaeology can't even ask.